Okay, next up we have Barbara Gringer, from also from the UCSB Economics Department. Um, I'm just gonna let you know when to start uh, when I get a cue from the video guy. But when it's up to you. All right, so, so I'm a PhD student in the Economics Department. Um, this is joint work with Professor Chris Costello, who's sitting up here. So, so we know there's been an increasing trend toward rights-based management in, in fisheries. Um, what we're looking at in this paper um, is, is ITQ fisheries. I spent a long time putting together a data set on lease prices, sales prices, uh, the total allowable catch, a lot of variables for different fisheries around the world. Um, I'm looking around the room and I'm sure I've contacted somebody in here looking for data at some point in the last couple years. Um, so what we're looking at is ITQ fisheries, but these have been implemented in very different ways in, di in different places. Uh, if you look at the way that the right is defined in New Zealand and U in, in the United States is one of the big ways. Um, in the US, it's considered a revocable privilege if you own an ITQ, um, whereas in New Zealand, it's, it's really an asset. It's something that they can, they can leverage against. They can bring it in as collateral to a bank. And so it, they're, they're treated very differently in different countries. And then within countries, um, there's a lot of variation too, the types of species that are under ITQ management. You can think of highly migratory species versus, versus other different types of species. And I'll, I'll get into this in greater detail. But what we're trying to do here is we put together a big data set with different types of ITQ fisheries. Uh, we have lease and sales price um, data as well as um, biological characteristics, um, total allowable catch and some other things. What we're trying to get at is whether the strength of the property right affects the asset price of the quota. Okay? And so y another way to put this would just be do strong property rights add value in ITQ fisheries. So in, in the paper, we go, we go through a quick theory of, of why this should be the case. I'll just give you a quick overview without the equations here. Um, you know, the basic setup is that the lease price should be equal to the, the current rents. It's kind of a, a proxy for profitability. Of uh, the sales price is the sum of the discounted rents. It tells you uh, it's, it, should be, it should be a proxy for um, not only your profits this year, but next year and the year after that and so forth. If you have weak property rights, um, so if there's some uncertainty about the future of the program, that what, we, what we argue is that that should decrease the amount that you're willing to, to pay to hold that as an asset. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward, I think. So if you take the ratio of these two, the lease price over the sales price, that ratio should be higher where property rights are weaker. All right, and that's what we're trying to get at. So, so this, this graph, I think, says a lot. Um, this, shows this, this shows this ratio, the lease to sales price ratio for three different countries. The blue one here is New Zealand, the red one is Canada, and then the green one is for the United States. You see this spike, that's the addition of the red snapper uh, fishery in the US. Um, what this suggests, to us anyway, is that uh, this, this ratio is higher um, where, where the property right is weaker anyway in, the, in terms of the law. The approach here, um, it's mostly a statistical approach. Uh, we're, we're controlling for things like biological characteristics, so time to maturity, the length of the species, um, whether or not it's highly migratory, and some other things. Interest rates, um, just to capture kind of the economic conditions. And then we control for trends for the catch, um, the total catch, total allowable catch, and next vessel price trends. And then we also control for the years of IT, ITQ experience for that, for that species in the country. Okay? What we're trying to do is control um, compare this lease to sales price ratio in different places with different types of um, property rights. So when we, when we look across countries, you know, controlling for what we can control for, we find that for comparable species in, in New Zealand um, and the United States, the lease to sales price ratio is about 80% higher in the US than in, than in New Zealand. Um, in the model, in the paper, we, we try to, we try to uh, convert this lease to sales price ratio into kind of a probability of having that right being revoked, or the probability of not having that right into the future. And this translates uh, roughly into a subjective probability of having this right revoked as being about 6% annually in the United States, and about 3% in Canada, which we, which we think is pretty substantial. We also look within country. Um, I, think, I think this is uh, one of the most interesting parts of the paper. We have a lot of variation, as I mentioned, the, just the types of species that are under ITQ management in New Zealand. So you can think about a, a highly migratory species um, and what that means if it's under ITQ management, all right? 
So if you have a highly migratory species, think of a southern bluefin tuna, this is something that spends part of the year outside of New Zealand's waters, right? So it's subject to foreign fishing pressure. It's something that's outside of the control of the, of the managers of the fishery. Um, that, there, that adds on some uncertainty about the future of the stock, right? We don't know how much is going to be coming back in, so it, it kind of attenuates the, the security and exclusivity of this property right. Um, similarly, um, there's been some talk here today about illegal harvest and poaching. Uh, we, we went through the plenary reports for all these different species in New Zealand, um, noted where poaching had been a problem. Um, so we went through something like 80 different species, uh, took note where they, where they had evidence that there had been some illegal harvest, and you know, op for obvious reasons that, that attenuates the security of this property right. Then we also look at some different policy shocks in New Zealand. Um, th these are shocks that, um, that should have sent a pretty strong signal to the, to the fishermen about how they were going to be treating this as an asset going to the future. There's a big buyback that was coinciding with, uh, with an allocation in, in, um, in around 1992. Um, and we argue that this, this sent a strong signal that they were serious about treating this as an asset, um, as a strong property right. So, so this, this scatter plot, um, I, I think, graphically shows a lot. So what we have down here on the horizontal axis is the lease price. Uh, on the vertical axis, we have the sales price. These are in log scales. And then all of these, uh, you know, these clusters of letters, these are all different species. All right, so, so here we have oysters, uh, yellowfin tuna, moonfish squid. Way up at the top, we have pawa. And what we notice is if we're trying to look where the highly migratory species are, you know, we talked about what, what type of effect that would have. We notice that these tend to be down, clustered down to the right, all right? And what that means is that um, it's, a, it's a higher discount rate, it's a higher lease to sales price ratio, which translates into a lower asset price. So just kind of summarizing what we find in the paper, um, highly migratory species um, have a significantly higher um, lease to sales price ratio. Than, than do other species that are kind of comparable. It's about 15% higher than others. Um, stocks that have a legal harvest, um, this lease to sales price ratio is about 40% higher. And then, and then similarly, the, the series of reforms led to a significant decrease in this ratio. Um, so, so to kind of wrap up, and then I, I think this says something um, to people thinking about co-ops anyway. Uh, if, if you have a property right, um, any, tor any sort of property right in a fishery, um, the strength of this property rights reflected in the asset price is what we find. Um, across countries, when we look, um, in, in the U.S., it's, it's arguably a weaker property right. Um, the, the lease to sales price ratio is nearly twice as high in the U.S. as it is in New Zealand for a comparable fishery. And then within New Zealand, um, stocks that have illegal harvest and poaching, it's about 40% higher. So people where, so if you're a fisherman in the power fishery or some other fishery that's prone to illegal harvest, you're willing to pay less to hold that as an asset than if, um, than if, than if it was more secure, if, if there were better enforcement. As, as far as thinking about co-ops, um, I, I think this says something, and I think you need to think about um, whether or not this is tradable and, and whether or not there are sunset provisions. Um, if, if, if this is something that's temporary and is going away, um, that, that would uh, kind of attenuate the value of holding, of holding the tradable permit. Um, and, and if there's uncertainty about the future of the program, it goes in a similar direction. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I guess we'll wait for the mic to get there. Uh, John Kleiss, I'm just trying to understand what you mean by lease to sales price ratio. So I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, if, if if I could lease the right to the fishery for just a year, I'm willing to pay more because I know what it's going to be this year versus the ratio of the sales means I'm going to own this right to fish forever and I'm, well how much am I discounting what I might get in the future? Is that what that's that, 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 That's exactly so right. So the more certain so, so, I am so, so things so going to so be the there greater, for so years So the greater the ratio, so as the lease price kind of converges on the sales price, you know, as that kind of approaches one, that, that's more uncertainty about the future of a holding. So I don't want to own this exactly thing because it may just fall apart. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's okay. exactly I got right. it. Thanks. Uh, how do you deal with the, the problem that in many cases lease prices do not reflect, are not a very good reflection of rents? That is to say rent being defined, in, at least by me, as the cost of management plus the, the value of the resource. Or is that not how you define it? So, so, so as, as an econ PhD student, um, 
I, I, I'm very prone to define that as, <laughs> as the current rent. Um, you know, make, we're obviously making some assumptions about mar markets being competitive here, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not exactly. Sure. Can I make a comment yeah, about that? Ahead. So I, I think I think that's probably true, but what what Corbett and I did here is we said, well, how much would you pay to have access to that fish stock for one year? And that's we we call that the lease price. And then th the second question is, how much would you pay to have access to this fish stock for as long as that fishery is going to be managed with an ITQ? And that's the sales price. And so the ratio does give you a sense of how secure you think the future is. So I, I agree with you on the management cost, but I think it's, I, I think we still get it, you know, we're still getting the answer to our question. I, I think that's right. That's one of the benefits of taking this ratio and not, you know, not treating this purely as a kind of an asset pricing. My question is, uh, when it comes to management costs, are they're variable with the variability of the fishery, would you, would you agree? I mean, if the, you know, the cost of maintaining uh, enforcement when the, fi when the boats are out there, in other words, as opposed to when they're not out there, uh, it, could you just touch on that a little bit? I, I'm probably not the guy in the room that um, <laughs> would be the one. I mean, that's, that sounds reasonable. Um, but there, there are probably a lot more people in here who, who could speak to the management costs. 